for our cloud solution architect, it is absolutely important that we give the confidence to our customer that what we write in the paper or what we show in the whiteboard is really capable to be deployed. So it really works in the cloud because a lot of your customer comes from on-premises background or they never have worked in a fully public cloud kind of environment. So there is always a skepticism around whether this will work or not. What is the reliability? What is the guarantee that my code will work as is how it works today? So that is why it is absolutely important that we try the proof of concept to bring in more confidence among the technical community within our customer space. So proof of concept really builds the confidence as I have been talking about it. It is the most important thing that somehow or other you need to find an opportunity to do the proof of concept even if there is no scope of doing that, right? Because it is not at all in the agenda in most of the cloud conversation, but if you consciously bring that into your discussion and do the proof of concept and show that it works, it will definitely have a lot of fan following. So that is why it is so important that we need to put a lot of effort in bringing that into the conversation. It kills the skepticism, whether it will work. My application code was written for on-premises. I have done it for container in Docker. Can it work in Kubernetes in the cloud? So all this skepticism really is something which you need to kill, right? And it's only possible by doing a small proof concept of your larger application. You don't need to bring everything of your application, maybe the key component, just to see whether they are capable of doing things. Um, are they able to receive the request, send the output? all those uh, minimal activity. And then last but not the least about the proof of concept is it helps you move faster into the production. Why? Because during the proof of concept in, a, in an enterprise kind of scenario where cloud is sort of restricted within the boundary of the compliance guideline by that company, right? So when you use public cloud as a normal individual user, you get everything, you do everything. But when you get into an organization boundary, you need to follow certain rules and restrictions of what you can use, cannot use, what can work, cannot work, right? Not all the cloud services which you see today in the public cloud is deployable in an enterprise kind of scenario. So in those kind of uh, scenario, when you really uh, go into real production deployment, you find a lot of blockers. Now, while doing the POC, you eventually have found those blockers and probably have found the workaround to achieve or probably re-analyze the, the blockers, whether they're really, they make sense in that enterprise scenario or they need a review to remove the blocker, et cetera. So it helps you actually move faster because what you exactly have done in the proof of concept, you have followed the DevOps practice. You can use the same DevOps pipeline or the scripts to move the workload into cloud. And you have fixed those challenges of the blockers or the unavailability or the blacklisting, whitelisting of uh, services available in the probably cloud. You probably have done enough work around that. You don't have to do that again. So that is why um, faster deployment to production is possible when you do proof of concept. With this, Thank you very much and hope you have enjoyed.